Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Shivan and I'm a fourth year medical student studying at King's College London. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about OSCEs. If you don't know what OSCEs are, they're objective structured clinical examinations. And they're a certain set of exams that everyone has to give at some point during their time in medical school especially if you're studying in the UK or in Australia, maybe a few other countries as well. If you have OSCEs but you don't know what they are, they're basically practical exams with uh, that test your communication and word-based skills. So everything that you're learning in theory is now being tested practically now. So that includes procedures, histories, examinations, uh, communication, all of that. This was something that I found extremely daunting. I was very apprehensive about it because, you know, when you're doing an oral or verbal exam, uh, the pressure is much higher because you don't have the time to think because you really just have to know what you need to say. But after giving a few, I feel like I've understood the main, the key principles of studying for an OSCE and now they're not so scary anymore. So in today's video, I'm going to break down how you should study or how you should approach studying for your OSCE. For context on why you should listen to me, my score in my last OSCE, I'll put it up there. I got 100% in 3 stations and 90% in 6 out of 12 of my stations and I passed all 12 of my stations. So that's just to show you that I have figured out a method or an approach that really works for me and I want to share that with you. But anyway, enough about me. Wait, actually one more thing about me. If you haven't yet, go check out my YouTube channel because of there I make videos about medical school, university, lifestyle, all those sorts of things. So go check it out if you think it's something that you might find interesting or that's something that it's something that you'd like to watch, then smash that subscribe button and join me for a lot more videos. Okay, now seriously, enough about me. Firstly, to start studying for your OSCEs, you have to divide your OSCE into station types. So, uh, depending on what year you're in, what medical school you're in, your OSCE will be a little different. For example, in my medical school, we have 12 stations in our year 3 OSCE and 16 stations in our year 5 OSCE. And usually these stations are pretty evenly divided between four to six different types of stations. These include histories, examinations, procedures, clinical communication, interpretation, and ADE assessment. I like to separate that one because it's quite unique and it involves aspects of really all of the other exams. But Let's not go into too much detail just yet. All of these stations function around three key principles, knowledge, structure, and communication. If you divide all the different types of stations into these three segments and you master each and every one of them, there is nothing that can stump you. But that's easier said than done. So how do you really nail down those three components? What I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to give you overall tips that cover the breadth of your OSCE, so all different types of stations, and it'll give you a general idea of how to study, what helps, what resources to use. So without any further ado, let's get into these tips. First and foremost, I want to say that OSCEs are not something that you're meant to study for alone. My recommendation would be that when the time comes for your OSCE and you start preparing, you should be spending around 20 to 30 percent of your time studying alone and around 70 to 80 percent of your time studying with others because it's a practical exam communication is very important and you're not going to be able to learn communication by just practicing alone additionally for practicing things like exams procedures to get feedback for all of this having other people around you is very important and a fact that's true for any exam is that there's a sort of synergy when you're studying with other people around you. You learn from them, they learn from you. That fills in all the gaps that you may have in terms of your knowledge or your skills and you all end up getting better. And the larger the group, the better. Because when I was studying for my OSCEs, I was studying in a group of like 
seven eight people and we'd meet up almost every day when it came down to the last two three weeks before our oskis and some days some people couldn't join but then since it was a group of seven eight people you always knew that there'd be at least one other person to study with secondly is make a revision schedule know what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are and focus on those so basically you want to divide it up like today i'm gonna do it histories and examinations maybe tomorrow i'm gonna tackle a few procedures and i'm gonna delve into interpretation maybe one day you self-study interpretation and the next day you practice scenarios with your friends similarly maybe one day you read up on examinations alone and then you're scheduled to be practicing that with your friends colleagues peers the next day just like that know what you're doing every day so that you don't miss out on one specific part you need to leave enough time for all your different types of histories all your different types of examinations all your different types of interpretations so create a revision schedule so that you're well organized you know what you're doing on each day and of course leave some room to be flexible depending on what other people around you want to practice or want to study as well because when you're studying with other people you can't just focus on what you want to do yourself you have to do you have to compromise a bit and sometimes that actually ends up helping you but make a schedule, allocate enough time to everything and you will thank yourself for it. My next tip will be to work on timing. Oskis are very, very time constrained because you have like six minutes, eight minutes to take a full history, do a full examination, which can be quite difficult when you're starting from scratch. Uh, so you need to be really, really slick with your examinations. You need to be really concise with your histories. That's why you need to know what questions to ask or what uh, sort of uh, steps that you have to follow in your examination. Because if you spend time thinking or if you just shoot blanks, you know, just randomly aim for something with your histories, you're not going to get anywhere in the given amount of time. Maybe that generalized approach would help if you had an abundance of time, if you had 15, 20, maybe 30 minutes to take a history from a patient. But if you only have six or eight minutes, you need to know what questions to be asking. For example, if someone's coming in with, let's say, a headache, you need to know what your following questions are going to be. Do you have accompanying nausea? Do you have accompanying visual changes? Have you ever lost consciousness? You need to ask the relevant questions. So be slick, be concise and work out your timings. My next tip would be attend relevant placements and teaching throughout the year. So a lot of times there are certain teaching sessions and lectures and stuff like that that you may not find that useful so you may not go to them or may not focus on what's going on in these different lectures or sessions. But if you feel that something is relevant to your OSCEs, for example, it's a case-based discussion session or it's a session teaching examinations or some sort of clinical skill please don't overlook it go for that because that may be a great chance to practice to perfect or to introduce yourself to certain skills certain techniques and to get comfortable in the simulation based environment of uh you know doing whatever the skill or the procedure task is um and you'll be more comfortable during your OSCE because of it. Another pro tip is practice presenting. You need to know how to concisely summarize your entire history, your entire exam, or your entire sort of interpretation into one or two sentences because presenting is something that will come up in almost every single station. And then a tip that everyone gives in everything but is always true is to understand the technique the logic the process of whatever you're doing rather than just blindly memorizing steps because first of all it'll become a lot easier for you to remember what you're doing to make sense of what you're doing and you look more professional more knowledgeable while doing it and also your examiner will ask you questions at the end of most stations and if you're just blindly following steps, you won't have that problem solving mindset to be able to answer those questions because you don't really know what's going on. You're just parroting questions or you're just, you know, 
robotically going about certain steps in an exam or something like that so know why you're doing what you're doing and uh, that will help you a lot and lastly make a list of high yield conditions high yield topics high yield examinations for example because uh, there is a vast amount of knowledge uh, amount types of examinations types of you know presentations on radiological interpretation stations or you know uh, biochemistry interpretation stations or whatever that can come up so know what the most high yield topics are and practice those first because 90% of the time it's usually a high yield topic that comes up it's, it's very rare that they give you something you know uh that's very out of the blue or very rare now i'm gonna just take a couple of minutes to break down how you should approach each type of station or a general approach i'm not gonna go into detail because if you guys want i'm gonna make more detailed videos on each different type of station explaining how to go about them tips and uh, suggestions on structure and stuff like that if that's something you'd be interested in definitely leave a comment down below letting me know and drop a like on this video so i know that you're interested as well so now how to approach each one firstly histories with histories i like to take a presentation based approach so split up your histories into different types of presentations for example chest pain shortness of breath headache uh you know change in bowel symptoms uh diarrhea vomiting you know split it up into all these different symptoms and then make differentials for each one make 10 15 differentials for each one and then write down what the differentiating factors are under each differential so why would you know that chest pain here is an mi and it's not a pneumothorax well that's because an mi is more likely to be central crushing pain versus a pneumothorax is more likely to be sharp pain sharp stabbing pain so like things like this you want to be able to know what the differentials are for a presenting complaint and further how to differentiate between those differentials and that will help you in your questioning during a history as well as recognizing what is going on for exams know what exams are coming up practice them nail down all the different techniques and all the different steps and know again know why you're doing what you're doing and know the most common differentials that can come up or the most common conditions that can come up for that specific type of exam three for communication clinical communication is usually explaining something to a patient either explaining a diagnosis to them explaining a medication to them or explaining a procedure to them or it could be something like breaking bad news so make a list of conditions that they're likely to ask you to explain to a patient a list of medications that likely need counseling or a list of procedures that likely need counseling and practice structure under each one and also practice the unique relevant points to each medication to each procedure to each condition and yeah and it's similar with breaking bad news have a structure there's a structure spikes so check that out but i'm not gonna again go into too much detail on one thing right now for interpretation there are about four or five different types of interpretations that you may be asked to do usually in an oski again i can't comment exactly on what everyone's oski is going to be like but for example you could get radiology so you could get an x-ray you could get a ct or uh you could get um a set of biochemistry results a set of bloods like lfts or you could get uh you could get pulmonary function tests you could get um blood tests like an fbc you need to be able to interpret it so that means understanding what each component of either the radiology or either the blood test signify in blood tests it's a bit easier because you can just go through each blood result and you can talk about it like this signifies this this is normal so this signifies this this is raised so that probably means this this in conjunction with this it likely points towards you know what i'm saying but in radiology again you need to have a structure whether it's a chest x-ray a gastrointestinal x-ray whatever having a structure will make things easier it will help you and it will make sure you don't miss out on anything and lastly ate so uh for ate 
just again know all your steps constantly address address acute issues as soon as you recognize them uh, don't miss any of the essential steps for example making sure the patient has a patent airway or checking essential signs for circulation or breathing um, make sure you do everything cover everything don't miss any of the important stuff and just constantly think assess manage reassess assess manage reassess that's how you want to be thinking throughout your a to e and again there are about like five to ten relevant conditions that can come up in an a to e usually so know what those are and you'll have a specific management for each one it's usually a type of hemorrhage anaphylaxis a seizure something like that so there's a list check those out and know what to do in each case or how to recognize the stuff in each case as well now to finish off i'm going to mention a few resources that i used and found really useful for my oski so firstly definitely use any useful resources you can find on your university or your medical school's website because they usually will have some use they'll usually have a syllabus guide or something like that if you do have one refer to that because that will be your most essential resource in terms of knowing what can come up then use geeky medics geeky medics is the most elite the best resource for oskis in my opinion and i have used it to the max throughout my time studying for the oskis they have excellent explanatory pages they have excellent scenarios uh they have everything you need to study for your oski basically questmed which is my favorite resource to study for my single best answer exams now also has an OSCE section. Although I don't like it as much as Geeky Medics, it's definitely good to get some variety into your revision schedule. So try using that as well. And then I always like to go back to zero to finals for knowledge. It's not overly detailed, but it definitely summarizes things very concisely. And if you want to find an essential piece of information, it's a great place to go. If you're in the UK, the BMJ, uh, is also another fantastic resource so consider using that as well that's the absolute gold standard on finding out what the investigations what the management for a certain condition is and stuff like that but i think i've rambled on enough about oskis i think you should know enough to get started and to start moving in the right direction for your objective structured clinical exams yeah uh, i hope that gave you some clarity made you a little more and less scared for your oski uh there's a lot to do but it's definitely a really fun exam to study for i'll say that much because uh, i had a great time studying for it because you get to spend so much time with your colleagues your peers your friends and uh yeah it's a great experience and it makes you actually feel like you're getting there getting ready to be a doctor you know so uh good luck if you have oskis coming up anytime soon or in the future but uh, if you found this video helpful useful if it gave you some good insights into studying for an oski then drop a like down below smash that subscribe button and leave any comments if you have any questions or anything like that share the video with uh your friends your peers in medical school and with that I will see you in the next one.